It's an NGO which also is working very closely with the UN agencies as the UNFPA, UNICEF, UNDP. All this because we feel that we are in Senegal 95% Muslims. And any organization which is trying to implement any type of new policy, we Muslims should have our words and our eyes in it to see if it is compatible with our belief or not. And uh, in this we, are, we have established a school which is teaching Quran. As I told you, many children memorize Quran from that school. Not Americans only, but we have students who came from Bermuda, from um, London. We have students from South Africa, from Namibia. From Namibia, uh, we have children from all African countries, Sudan, Chad, Nigeria, Ghana. All over we have students who came from there and study. But also the school has three departments, English, French and Arabic. We have teachers from other University by help from the Egyptian government, teachers from the Republic Islamic, Islamic Republic of Mauritania, Senegalese teachers and American teachers. And the students study all subject from kindergarten to uh, the diploma, baccalaureate diploma. And those who uh, achieve the diplomas can continue their studies in other schools. Right now we have students uh, in Cairo or in Egypt or in Mauritania or in other places in the world. And beside the schools, we also have a health program. The African American Islamic Institute has established an hospital which have all different branches like uh, general medicine, pediatrics, uh, gynecology, dentist. Uh, uh, and right now even it's going through an extension. We also not only do curative medicine but preventive medicine by teaching people mostly how to prevent certain diseases we have in the area like malaria, malnutrition, diarrhea. Those things can be avoided if the people know exactly what to do. That's why always in the hospital we run some uh, what we call EIC, information, education, communication, to teach mostly women uh, how to prevent this type of disease. And uh, for that also, as you know, many people in Senegal are illiterate. They cannot read or write in any language. That's why in parallel to the hospital, we run an illiteracy program where we were able to teach 5,000 women how to read and write, not in English or French or Arabic, but in the local dialect, because that makes things much easier for them to understand. Uh, Dr. Jerry, how many benefactors are there from your various programs collectively approximately? Collectively you may say, okay, the village, the city where we're living is a city of 300,000 people. But our actions are not limited just in that region. We are in many regions in Senegal. And uh, for instance, a uh, few weeks ago, we've been able to distribute 31,000 pairs of shoes to the needy people in Senegal. Right now we have in the harbor a container of 200 wheelchairs for the handicapped people. Right now we have two 40-foot containers of medicine and medical equipment, which we will use what we can use in our hospital, and the rest we give it to the Ministry of Health in Senegal and to distribute to other institutions in the country. And our efforts are not limited mostly in Senegal. For instance, every year we have a convention in the Gambia where 30,000 people in the stadium will come and listen to Sheikh Hassan to talk about one topic as the it might be alcohol, tobacco, and you know the status of women in Islam, Islam and democracy, whatever topic, you know the brotherhood in Islam, whatever topic might interest us with the people. We we do the same way in Nigeria recently in Ghana, so it's all over. I mean we have students as I told you coming from all those different places. We have also families, Muslims, who just come in the community, stay and learn about their religion. This is Channel Islam International, Guard to Paris Islam Class Islam in the studio with us. I have uh, honored to have His Eminence, Sheikh Hassan Ali Sisi, founder of the African American Islamic Institute. And uh, we're going for a short news break now. After the break, we'll come back and continue our discussion with interesting guests and honorable scholars we have in the studio today. So stay tuned. Our Islam, I need a whole new, pro uh, a complete program. <coughs> Excuse me, just to go, uh, j j just to cover these various. Um, uh, accomplishments of Sheikh Hassan al-Sisi. He's, he's been given the keys of various cities in the United States of America. In one city, there's even a Sheikh Hassan al-Sisi day, which uh, is the 2nd of October. 16th of June. 16th of June. And 2nd of October. In New Orleans, yes. Sheikh Hassan al-Sisi, a man who's very well traveled and uh, a, a man, I mean, who, who has a large congregation. 
you know, Muslims always tell the West Islam is the truth. But when it comes to finding Islamic solutions to the problems that, that the world faces today, can you give us some of your thoughts on this? Yes, sir. Islam is the answer to our problems. Yes, but uh, as I said earlier, a Muslim, wherever he goes, he should act as a Muslim. And this religion should have modern value to the Muslim, to help non-Muslims. By helping them, they will know what type of religion it is. Even by dealing with them, we have to deal with them. Because Allah said in the book, لا ينهاكم الله عن الذين لم يقاتلكم في الدين ولم يخرجوكم من دياركم أن تبروهم وتقصتوا إليهم إن الله يحبهم وسطهم. Dealing with non-Muslims is the first step for giving them dawah. Recently in Senegal, last month, I have a man who came for a business in West Africa, and he told me, Sheikh, I know you people, you Muslim, you don't, you don't tell lie, you don't steal, you don't deceive. As for us, we can do all that for this dunya. That alone is a certificate from non-Muslim to Muslim community. Al-Haqqu ma shahida bihi al-Ada. And always, by dealing with them, helping according to what we have, we will give them big dawa in that way. And I hope that Muslims all over they should practice the religion because practicing the religion will make non-Muslims even respect you. I remember when I was in London, I live with a lady in one apartment. He was, she was not a Muslim, but she used to hear my voice at Fajr time praying. And one day, I came to bed late. At Fajr time, she didn't hear my voice. The way she knocked on my door, I thought that a very big problem happened in the, in the house. I said, oh, what happened? She said, the sun is coming up very soon. You will never be able to say your prayer again. <laughs> and she is not Muslim. Hmm? Then following your religion wherever you go, and acting accordingly because a din al muamala hmm? helping those whom you can help ittaqillah walaw bi shiqqi tamr aw walaw bi kalimatin hasana kullu has all this can help non muslim to accept what we are saying that islam is the solution <coughs> another example Jerry has mentioned that every year in December we have a convention in Gambia. Many people, they come, many doctors also from the United States of America, Muslims and non-Muslims, coming to help. They will, they will come with their boxes full of medicine, tools, equipments, just to help the community, humanitarian help. And one of them, Dr. Richard, he was a Jew. <coughs> He's not a Muslim. He have, has intention to stay up to three weeks just helping in the hospital. But the way she, he said, we live together, eat together, helping the needy people, and uh, taking care of everybody, he himself, he said, this is the type of life I was looking for. This is the type of community I wanted to be in. And he came to me and said, I want to join Islam. He joined Islam and we gave him the name Abdul Rashid. 
when he went back the following year, he came back with his wife. His wife also followed the religion, embraced Islam and followed. Even what, one time I remember he was telling me on the phone, my wife, she is a better Muslim than I, than I am. Yes. Then just with the, the way you treat the others, the way you show them, telling truth, helping all the needy people, eating with them, <coughs> feeding them, even giving them water. A man enter paradise just to give water to a dog. Hmm? What will be the case if you give that water to a human being? Hmm? He is the best of what Allah has created. Got something for six. Allah exalted me. What is it? Document or what? That's why we are urging our fellow Muslims, our brothers, that Islam is a religion of truth. But we should, we Muslims, to act accordingly. According to the teaching of Sayyidina Muhammad according to his behavior, according to his character, good characters, all that will help. Mm -hmm. uh, Sheikh Jerry, uh, the African American Islamic Institute, uh, as uh, from what you said, a lot of activities in Africa. And uh, what, what really makes Africa unique among all other continents from a religious perspective is that Africa is one of the large frontiers where you find a lot of missionary activity in Africa. Uh, the scale is, is enormous, probably out, uh, more than any other continent, any part of the world. At the same time, Africa has a majority Muslim community. Uh, how has this affected the work of your organization? Uh, and, and has there been any time when your organization has crossed paths with missionaries, with mission organizations, etc.? Yes, uh, as you said, uh, uh, we are in many activities and those people also are in the yeah. field. Although in Senegal it's 95% Muslim, it's small, but we are living in peace and harmony with non-Muslims, as the Sheikh just mentioned. But uh, even I was reading earlier a report in Time magazine where they're saying that they are sending missionaries in Muslim countries in order to convert Muslims into Christians. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, you know, it's not easy. And uh, as the chef says, we are always acting as an example. Because, as I said earlier, the media is mostly misleading and misinforming people, mostly in Western countries. And the Sheikh always told us that whenever they're dealing with Islam, they are dealing with Islam unjustly. If a Muslim commit a crime, they blame the crime on Islam, but not on the Muslim. But if a Jew or a Christian commit a crime, on that particular then they'll not blame Christianity or Judaism, but they'll blame that same only person. And this is very unfair. So, for instance, I was in a meeting representing the African-American Islamic Institute. And then the man next to me was a Christian. He said, when we have a problem here, because these people are representing an Islamic organization, and here it is an NGO community. I told him, no, the problem doesn't exist. We Muslims, we don't have problem with non-Muslims. Because in any Muslim house, you'll find somebody named Jesus, Isa, or Joseph, or Moses. But you'll never walk in a non-Muslim Christian family and see somebody named Muhammad. So we do recognize your religion and your prophets. Because if you don't, we are not Muslim. But you Christians, you don't recognize neither Islam as a religion, nor the Prophet Muhammad as a prophet. So we don't have your problem. You're the one who have our problem. And he 